Hello, friends, and welcome to the Show to Be Named Later podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Boss, joined by our good friend, Noah Storzinger, down in KC, Misery. How you doing, bud? Anything uh, you want to go right off the bat? Because I've got a lot of things cooking. We've been gone for a while. It's been about a week, week and a half. Uh, I'm ready to go with both guns blaring. Well, what do you got? I mean, we could you could go to any of the four sports uh, okay. in Minnesota. But. Okay, I'm going to start with, so the wait, the wait is over. Uh, you know, and, and as I believe we did predict here on the show to be named later, uh, Kirk Cousins goes to the Atlanta Falcons. And uh, I, you know what? I have never been more indifferent about somebody in my life. Like, I don't wish him any, any specific harm at all. I do kind of believe he is a little bit of a chotch uh, on the way out. Um, I would have rather that he didn't even say anything, you know, thanks for the memories or anything like that. I just didn't want to hear from him. Um, I I don't know if I've ever had a player that I thought was such a big piece of what would be next year. And then when he was gone, I was like, yep, yeah, okay. Uh, and I, I think we talked, we did talk about that, that um, I think it is time to move on. Yeah. He, it was interesting because your so your same exact feelings were how I felt. You know, I, I was on a work call actually, and someone had said, you know, hey, uh, cousins went to Atlanta, and at you it was like, oh, uh, okay, you know, it, yeah, it, it was right. fine. Um, but you know, those videos come back where you know he's he's in Washington. He goes, okay, I want to, you know, I, I'm going to sign this deal. I want to I want to uh, retire Redskin. Okay, now I'm in Minnesota. Yeah, I'm going to sign this deal. I really want to retire a uh, a Minnesota Viking. And then in his press conference in Atlanta, yeah, you know, I signed up. I'm here to, to retire at Atlanta Falcon. He said those exact same words in yep. three different spots. Yep. You chased the money. That That's all you did. To your point, like, I don't think any Minnesota Vikings fan is is mad at Kirk, but it's a, it's a way of like, you know what? At the end of the day, we all knew what you were going for. I get it. It's a lot of money, but come on. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I agree. And, and I, I will say this um, because I – I think that it should be pointed out that, you know, Kirk Cousins in his career has done more financially than you would have ever given that guy credit for. When he was drafted, I don't think anyone in their white mind would have thought that Kirk Cousins would have made the kind of money that he made in the NFL. So my, I, my hat's off to you, man. You, you, uh, you did things that I don't think anybody really thought you were going to do. You made more money and, and you continue to chase the money. Um, you only won one playoff game with the Minnesota Vikings. And that's why I feel kind of indifferent about it. Um, you knew he was just going to say what he needed to say to appease everybody so that he didn't ruffle any kind of feathers. But at the end of the day, uh, I don't think it really cared or mattered one way or another if he ended his career in purple or now uh, real men wear black. Okay, he still wears socks and sandals. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I like I say, I don't. Now, one thing that I will say about this, I think that we predicted a few weeks back that the time was right to, to look forward and to move forward on from Kirk Cousins because it's time to now start looking at the Minnesota Vikings without number eight, or at least a, a number eight with cousins on the back of the Jersey and look to actually trying to build this team to what we, what we think it's going to be. And with all that money that they saved on Kirk cousins, let's talk about what they did with that money. Right. I mean, dude, I, I am, I'm excited only because the, the, the signings keep coming and coming. We just had one, not to, I mean, maybe five hours ago, um, yeah, quarterback, which is what we need. Shaq Griffin, right? Yep. Shaq Griffin, and and I was gonna bring up this stat, which I think he's got like a seventy-two and a half uh, passer passer rating against, which is the highest in the cornerback room uh, last year for the Vikings. Like he would have been the top cornerback oh, right, for right. the Vikings, which is you know you get to go get those guys when you when you free up all that money. Um, you know they went out, they got Sam Darnold. I don't think people are. It, we'll get, we'll get to him. Yeah, we'll get um, to him. I, I just like the fact that they focused and, and what they did was they made a lot of low risk deals with a lot of guys that I think can help this, this ball club out. You know, and we, um, you got, uh, you've got uh, Andrew Van, what was his name? Andrew, Andrew Van Ginkle. Uh, 
which I I think that's a great sign right there. But then the, the other thing was the defensive uh, – well, he plays the rush linebacker, uh, Jonathan Grenard, I think – was because because if you want to go you want to go Daniel Hunter versus Grenard in the long run I, okay in the year 2024 obviously Daniel Hunter to me is the better of the two players right but what is the upside of a guy like Grenard because many people don't even think that he has reached his potential he's gotten better every year that he's been in the NFL and he's not even at it so what he's 25 years old right is that right? 25 yep. years old, lot cheaper deal. And so you don't know in a couple of years, if he hits that potential, he might be a Daniil Hunter. Yeah, Daniil Hunter is great, but you know, you, you, we talk about money with cousins. You could not have put what Hunter made. Um, what was it like 50, 50 mil a year or something like that for two oh, years, yeah. right? All guaranteed money. There's no way the Vikings could have done that. And so when I look at, you know, this shit is, is chess. It ain't checkers. Okay. And so when I look at the, the, I, I guess the long-term plan, I think Renard right now, it, it, it just seems like a better fit. Don't you think? It does. And, you know, I think the only thing to worry about, the only risk is the injury history. He's, he's, I think never yes. played a full season in the NFL, which is yep. is fine. I mean, I anything's better than Marcus Davenport, if you remember that signing. Right, right. Well, now we um, got all dead dead cap money uh, because of that, so that's cool. Yeah. Um, but I mean, they went out. They got another linebacker, Blake Cashman, former uh, uh, U of M yeah. player. Well, yeah, um, yeah, Minnesota boy. He is so excited to be here. And and here's the deal: was uh, what what was it? Uh, Van uh, Van Wimple, Winkle. What's his Van name? Winkle? He was he was a uh, a Miami guy, right? So he yep. had played with Flores. I mean, I think that you are punching guys in that even if Flores is just here for another year, I I really like what our defense is kind of looking like. They went, you know, mainly with like, but I don't think that they're done signing guys as of yet. I think they are still. I think they still have cash to spend, and and so they have the lowest. They have the lowest payroll in the NFL right now. Right, right, and so. I got to believe that if you went out and signed Kirk Cousins and they weren't going to do it for four fucking years, like Atlanta, like, you know, but if, if that were the case, you certainly would not have the money to spend on the guys that we have brought in. And like you say, they brought in uh, Shaq Griffin, a cornerback, what Seattle, uh, he will act absolutely be in the running for a starting position on the cornerback. Caleb Evans, I think, is in the mix yet, too. Not not really sold on that guy. Uh, but it gives us an opportunity to look, okay, defensively, uh, we are, I, I think, in a position. And it, it, it still makes sense to be able to sign guys down the road as well. Now, offensively speaking, they signed, uh, you know, and these are, like I say, these are low-risk moves. Uh, Dan Feely, old Chicago Bear, offensive lineman. Um, they also, I, th I think, uh, it was, uh, Jonah Williams that they signed as well. All yep. right. Um, right. So, I so. The, these are all, like I say, low risk that, that might pay dividends down, down, the, down the line. Now that brings us to, uh, the huge elephant in the, in the room there, uh, at quarterback situation with Mr. Sam Darnold, because I am not high on this guy. I am not, uh, I'm not, I, I, I think that the Vikings have a lot of more optimism than they should about him being the bandaid on a bullet hole or whatever it is. But that means this for, for Quasi, this is, this is his monumental moment right now is what he is going to do in the draft because you are looking at the future of the Minnesota Vikings right now. And I really like our chances because they did make another deal as well. And now they have the 23rd and the 11th pick in the first round. And that gives you some jostling uh, maneuvering. However, I don't think it's going to get you up to a number three spot in the draft. 
The top three teams are going to take a quarterback for sure. So you better be damn sure you know who you're going to get or who you want at quarterback, and you better be damn sure that he is going to be the guy in the next three, four, five years, whatever it is. Don't you think? Right. And, you know, one guy I want to touch on that we we forgot is we also beefed up the running game. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. we'll, get to, we'll, get, yep, we'll get to that. We got, I got okay. one for that okay. one too. I want to stay with this first. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, the the picks, I, I liked the trade to go into 23. Um, I, I think it's trying to, to get enough ammo to, to get into the top four, top five. I, to your point, I don't know that you're going to get in the top three. I think you can get to number four. I think their main guy right now is J.J. I'd McCarthy. Say- I say about uh, that. Yep, yep. You already beat me to the punch, but keep going. Right. I, I think JJ's a guy now. If they can't do that, um, you know, there's there's routes where, hey, maybe we keep eleven and twenty three, and we just keep beefing up this team. Well, um, and I, I I've seen, you know, hey, maybe the quarterback of the future is not in round one. Maybe he's a round two, round three guy, which scares me. But yep. I I think right now the the best case scenario, even for a Sam Darnold, who's you know, it's 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 hit or miss. Obviously, I mean, he's he's terrible. never had a good team, but this it's is terrible. they call it a they call it a furnished apartment that he's coming into right now. It, he, okay. it is the best situation that he's ever been in. Right, and I've heard that this is his opportunity to be the best Sam Darnold he can be. But even at the best Sam Darnold, I I look at him as the best Sam Darnold he can be. You got thirty two teams in the league. I look at him being in the 20 to 32 category. Okay. And, and, you know, maybe you have something like you had in, in Baltimore or 1985 Chicago, although they, they had an offense as well. Uh, they had sweetness, but you have a defense that's so good that you can get by with having a Sam Darnold um, as, as your quarterback. Um, the, the, the point that I, I'm going to make, because that was the question that I was going to ask you was, do they have something in mind? They've got to have something in mind, especially with the move to get 23 and 11. But do they have something in mind uh, or are they going to just go, we'll take the the best player available at 11 and at 23 in the first round and go from there? Because if you do that, and, and I don't want to see that route, if you do that, then you are pretty much conceding this year, in my opinion, you're saying that, that that's it, and then you're right back to the same the same game next year again, okay? And and you know unless you're you're gonna you're gonna really lay a big shit burger, and you're gonna be a um, a lottery pick, you're gonna be in the in the line for a number one draft. If if you're just gonna go with taking the best available guy at eleven and twenty three, then you really don't have an answer at quarterback, and that that worries me. Yeah, and you know, the the point of if you go with eleven and twenty three, you look at hey, second round, maybe third round, whatever it may be, because um, then you get into Bo Nix, Michael Penix kind of range, and I and I'm not really sold. I've heard the Vikings are semi high on them, which is I heard Penix as well. Uh, I'm I'm telling you, I, and and nobody even thought J D McCarthy would be uh, there'd be no problem about getting him at. 11th that was initially and now they're saying he might not be around even at 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 number five and so i was listening to a show earlier today and they said if if you are going in with all or nothing on a quarterback then you have to be sure on on four guys okay or four quarterbacks that you can be able to think that are going to be around but you better be fucking sure that this is the guy because like i say you know with the the exception of addison Quasi has not had very good drafts, my friend. You know, and I like what what they're doing right now. But this is, to me, a make or break decision. I mean, this is going to tell what this team is going to look like five years from now easily. So it it really is the ultimate litmus test for this guy is is what they're going to do. And I haven't been this excited for an NFL draft in a long time. I really like where I'm like, man, I can't wait to see what the Vikings are going to do. Let's just hope they're not asleep at the wheel and they get their pick in on time. Well, yeah. Um, but, but no, I, I think it's uh, super excited for the draft. And just, 
I think more optimistic about this season than to be honest than I was last season, quite truthfully, uh, especially after the Bucks game that that uh, week one game. But um, no, I think this is just be, it's becoming a well-rounded team. Questy doesn't draft well. Yes, I think he hits more on some undrafted guys, which is funny. But um, it, you know, I, I think there's some weapons, and it's it's a division that I still think is kind of weak. However, there are plenty of teams that are plenty of, of, of media outlets that are say, saying we're going to finish last this year. And I, I still don't see the right. bears finishing oh, yeah. no more than four. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? And, and, and we'll get, because here, here's the deal. Uh, I just want to, because why I say this is such a moment, uh, uh, a, why it is such a big deal. This, this, this year's draft where it is monumental by all stretches of the imagination. I am just going to go down the list because either Quizzy is going to figure out how to get us into the next level of Vikings football, or this is what we got coming. I guarantee it. This is from the years 2006 to 2017 Vikings starting quarterbacks, 2006, Brad Johnson, 2007, T-Jack, Tavares Jackson, 2008, Gus Farratt, 2009, 2010, Brett Favre. Oh, Joe Webb was also involved in that. 2011, Donovan McNabb, just shoot me now. 2012, Christian Ponder, when that when they had McNabb, it was the same deal. We traded up to get fucking Christian Ponder, and that guy was not a football player at all, or at least a quarterback. Uh, 2014, 15, Teddy Bridgewater. How'd that work out? 2016, Sam Bradford. 2017, Case Keenum, who, by the way, has won as many playoff games as Kirk Cousins. Mic drop. Fuck off. Okay, so what I am telling you right now is that that is why this is such a big draft because you are going to have the years of absolute mediocrity going from boogly boogly to Sam Boogles. Yeah, I'm not doing that. They better get this right. Period. Facts. Yeah. Who, who's the guy? Like if they trade up, who's that guy for you? JJ McCarthy is who I want right now. And, and I don't know. And I know that they did have a private, I think a private workout with him this week. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there is something I, I don't know. And I, I could be wrong. Cause guess what? I'm a grade school teacher. I'm not, I don't, I, I wasn't at the combine. So I could be way off base. I'm telling you out of the guys. Um, the one that I don't want is, uh, I just don't think, I, I just don't think I want him on uh, uh, Drake Mays. Really? I don't, I don't want him. I don't think I want Bo Nix any longer. Uh, the only, I, I don't want Penix. And, I, and I'll tell you, well, I can get to this a little bit later because we're going to have a friends segment uh, here because I, somehow I think that my some of my friends have gone absolutely batshit crazy. But whatever, uh, J.J. McCarthy is the guy that I have my, my, my eye on. My, that's my personal wish list. But, you know, if I'm wrong, then so what? I'm still going to teach school tomorrow. So there you go. I think I think JJ's my guy right now, which I was not on board with JJ weeks ago. I mean, months ago, whatever it may be. Um, quite honestly, I'd be completely fine with uh, JJ, Jaden Daniels, or Drake May. After that, I I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of a crapshoot at that point. Yeah, right. And nobody knows. Like, um, I was listening to a show, like I say earlier today, and they were talking about how CJ Stroud. There were some folks that were just saying that he maybe shouldn't have even been in the NFL draft. That's how he, you know, Ohio State quarterbacks, they can't play, they can't transfer to end or, you know, transfer their game to the NFL. Um, there was another stat is something about uh, the year that Purdy came out. Uh, and I forget now off the top of my head, who's in the draft. Uh, there are only two quarterbacks from that draft. And I think like six were taken that are actually played in the last, you know, in week 17, you yeah. know what I'm talking about? So it is such a roll of the dice. And that is why I hope that the Vikings fully know who they want and they they've done their homework. All right. Because 
Another another deal that you brought up on the free agent deal. You want to announce who he got because normally, you know, X Packer, X Packers or whatever. I don't, you know, I don't give too much hype, but we have made a commitment somewhat to the running game. Well, we got Aaron Jones. It, it, it's an upgrade from from Alexander Madison. We'll tell you absolutely, that. absolutely, absolutely. And and to me, uh, Aaron Jones is not. You know, he's not going to get you thirteen hundred yards. Uh, this this next year, and and some have said that he may not even be the feature back. Um, that you're you're now wait wait a minute. What I mean by that is you might because there's a lot of tread on those tires. Okay, and so you may not want to give him twenty carries a game, maybe even fifteen carries a game, if. And, and you do have a Ty Chandler who can be explosive at times. So I think that you play to how the game is 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 being played, right? Um, to me, the Vikings have a tandem now at running back that you can, if, if they stay healthy, that you can different style runners, right? And and even if Aaron Jones is not your your featured back, or he's not going to get you 1,300 yards or anything like that. I got news for you, Mr. Brown. Every time we see the Packers, if we win two games next year, I want him to shove it up their fucking ass every single time, right? I mean, oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I had a good friend, the Lonely Debater, talked about when they, because the Packers, you know, that's what good teams do, they, they handle their running back situation by signing Josh Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. Right. And my, my friend, the lonely debater was like, well, the green Bay Packers had the best running back tandem for five seconds. And then they, they let Jones go and Hey, we bought them feeders. We'll take that for sure. Yeah. 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 It, it'll be fun to see Chandler get some more run. I think this will inevitably, I mean, Obviously, with Madison gone, um, he's going to get some more run. And I, to your point, like I think it, it'll be nice to kind of switch it out. Um, both of them, they're two different kind of runners, but but Chandler's explosive, and I think he can get you some um, some good yardage this season. Um, but I think it's just an element to the game that we did not have last year whatsoever, and right. I think that just it's an added aspect to the offense. And do you think that they even tried? The running game. I mean, it, it it seemed like it was pass first all the time with four different kinds of quarterbacks. And well, you had you had Madison, who everyone was high on to begin the year. And uh, granted, yeah, everyone was excited about what it could be. I think it was one game he sucked, and it was like, well, I guess we can try and pass the ball. I mean, you got the best wide receiver, one of the best tight ends in the right. league. I mean, it, why not pass it? But when the when the pass game ain't going right, like you can't and you can't run the ball. Like there's a reason running's part of the game. You know, you gotta, you have a decent run game. And I think we do now. Now, now, did you buy into any of that horse pucky that everyone that, that folks have been selling that the Vikings are trying to shop Justin Jefferson? Have you bought into any of that stupidity at all? No, no, it, it's, I'm not going to lie. It's kind of like fun to read what you could get for Jefferson but he, you know, it's never going to happen, nor should they. Um, I do think he signs. I, I truthfully do. I think I know he's turned down some big deals, but I think at the end of the day, like, I just think if you let Jefferson walk, I, that's hard. He, he's the best wide receiver in the game. You you, I, you have he's young. You have to keep him. I understand yeah. that. You know, you don't win super teams traditionally haven't won Super Bowls paying wide receivers that amount of money, but. Good God, he he adds so much to to the offense that I think I you agree. Got to keep. And and when somebody says whether it's cocky or you know it, when he says it doesn't matter who's that quarterback, I'm still going to get you a thousand yards receiving. And he's had some pretty shitty quarterbacks just this last year. Oh, by the way, Josh Dobbs signed with uh, San Francisco. I saw that. Uh, yep, and sure. your buddy Alexander Madison signed with the uh, Oakland Raiders. And which I find interesting because without Josh Jacobs, Jingleheimer Schmidt uh, in Vegas, he might be their featured back and God bless him. Okay. You know what I mean? So last thing I wanted to bring up uh, football wise, uh, I mentioned quickly and, you know, I, 
I, I don't mean to throw any any of uh, friends under the bus because these are conversations I have face to face. And like I say, I don't know if they lit, watch or listen to the podcast anyways. So I'm, you know, I'm going to go for bro. But there is a part of me that, because I, I talk as much sports with my friends as I, I talk with you, Noah. And I don't know if, if, if we just get to a point where we're like Vern Voss, my father, where he just, no, he just lost touch with reality on everything about sports. You just don't know the game any longer. But this is what one of my good friends texted. <laughs> While all this stuff was going on with free agency, and I get this text, that, <laughs> mark my words, dude, the Vikings passing on Justin Fields is going to, is going to, it's going to bite him in the ass, man. You mark my words. I'm like, what are you talking about? What is that even a fair statement? How is it going to burn the, I mean, he plays in the AFC now and uh, well, he wanted, he, he's saying because we passed on making a play for Justin Fields. That's how it's okay, great. But like, but like he's a, he's got one year left on his deal. He's going to back up. Russell Wilson. So I, I mean, I I couldn't care. I I would right, I have right. liked Justin Fields over Darnold. Yeah, I would have. Except he I, can't throw the ball. He can't do it. And and maybe yeah. that, that is because of the Chicago Bears. And and as we continue to talk about friends, uh, apparently I I gave uh, a couple of my buddies a really. Uh, good laughing moment because you know I, people talk about my hatred and I don't know if I I'm a Christian I don't hate but I made a comment the other day about Caleb Williams going to the Bears and everyone's like really you want you want Caleb Williams uh, the that's his name right like I I have yeah. right and I said oh yeah and I got all excited I said oh yeah I want Caleb Williams to go to the Chicago Bears because they're going to fuck his career up dude guaranteed and I I got all silly and I, and they were just looking at me and they're like holy cow dude you hate on somebody that much that you're you know like you just got like this gleeful look and I'm like yep that's fine because even if the Vikings traded three number one picks to get the number one pick. I don't want Caleb Williams. And so to me, him going to Chicago is like any quarterback going to the Cleveland Browns. See you later. Right. Well, right. They, they don't really have much to build around him, And, and that's why I think it sucked for fields is just being in this position of like, okay, well, what do I do? Like, there's no one on my team. There, there's really right. no one to, 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 and so, yeah, I don't think the bears would have traded him to, within the division, but um, it, yeah, Caleb Williams, I, you know, we'll, we'll see where he goes next because he's not ending his career with the Chicago bears. I'll tell you that. Um, nor do I think in his time and maybe first stint, whatever with Chicago, nor will they ever win the division. Right. And I, I just want, I, I would just love to introduce him to Mr. Grenard. Next year, I am hoping so much for that, man. But, uh, okay, uh, last point on that, because uh, you brought up Russell Wilson, and I'm like, I can't even believe that. Like, if I'm Mike Tomlin right now, and I'm a kid on Halloween, choosing from Russell Wilson or Justin Fields, it's like you ring the doorbell on Halloween, you know, and they come up and they're like, well, you can have candy corn or you can have circus peanuts. Do you remember those circus peanuts that were like, Terrible. Like they use those to pack like gifts and stuff, right? Like it wasn't real candy. And it's like, that's your choice. You can choose either one, whatever you want. That's good. You know, like, man, I, I don't watch a lot of Steelers games, but I may start watching some this year just to see what a shit show that is. Now what's your beef with candy corn? Candy corn's amazing. It ain't candy. It doesn't taste like corn. It sucks. No way. It, you like candy corn? Yes. I like the designs they have on the actual piece of candy. Otherwise, crap, pure crap. Mm. I wouldn't. It would suck if it tasted like corn, though, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> that would be terrible. So, speaking of friends, I couldn't believe this next one. You know, the last time we did a show, I was really negative about the Timberwolves outlook. Um, I think we both were, I, I think my background was, was black, 
you know, Johnny Cash style. Um, it, it was it was pretty bleak at that time. Um, and we'll get to, I don't know what is going on right now with the Timberwolves. I just don't. But this is what I was I was really unhappy with and and I couldn't understand um, because I got it the same night. So the night that we did the podcast, we played the Indiana Pacers, and we'll get to the end of that game in just a minute. Uh, but I call one of my very good friends who I, I watch a lot of Timberwolves basketball with, and I'm I'm still spouting the, the the doom and gloom, and I can't believe this, how unfair this is. God hates us. And his response was, "I think this is a great this is a great thing." Okay, uh, we no, I, I he doesn't like Carl Anthony Towns so much that he's saying that this is at least what I was hearing. He wasn't upset by it. I don't know if he was okay, cheering for it, but he wasn't upset by it at all. And then said, you know, and now we just have, you know, next man up. Well, I'm sorry. It doesn't work that way. You don't take the number two player on your roster out of the roster and say, okay, it's next man up and we're going to hope for the best. Then I get a text from another good friend, a former guest. And to his credit, he said, I don't know basketball like you guys do. And, and he made that disclaimer, said the exact same thing. This is a great thing for the Wolves because we get that piece of shit out of there. And he didn't say piece of shit. That was my take on it. But he was he was applauding it as well. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, don't, don't Johnny me, Jules. Okay, there's nothing you can say about Carl Anthony Towns that's going to make me forget that I love my team, is there? So how can you cheer or applaud for something like this? Because it definitely does not make the team better that you are missing a guy like Carl Anthony Towns. And we, we can talk about next man up because I don't know what's going on with this team right now. Four and two on the road. And I did not figure that this was going to happen. I, I thought the Clippers game was done. There is next man up. Absolutely right now. Okay. Na is playing some good basketball right now. Nas Reed is back to Nas Reed and then some. So, but do you honestly think that that's going to go on for the remainder of the year? And, oh, wait a minute, the playoffs. Because we know the playoffs ain't like playing the Utah Jazz two nights in a row. I, I think the next man up mentality is still viable in this situation. It absolutely is, and we've seen it. Um, but is it going to be sustained throughout the season and through the playoffs? Uh, we'll see because – Right now, they got a lot of injuries, and I don't, I don't know what they're going to do tonight. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, it's, it's a, we'll see. I mean, hey man, Nas has been playing fantastic. Uh, Nikhil's picking up the slack. Um, I, I mean, TJ Warren. I, I don't mind TJ Warren now. Love it. They signed him to a seven day, ten day contract, right? I think yep. they should probably get him for the rest of the year. I thought. I agree. I thought he has picked up better than you thought, like hit the ground running. And I thought he's given us some very, very good minutes um, so far. I think that, yeah, he needs to be. Um, now, one thing that I was concerned by, and I'm wondering what, how you feel about this. So the very next night they played uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers. And didn't you just know when the game went into overtime, no, nope, lights out, that's it, that's ball game. You knew that we had a, a chance to win that game and, once it went to overtime, I was like, nope, that's done. Yeah, I mean, it's tough back to back. Uh, they also reviewed a three that was a three, and they took it away after a full quarter had right. gone through, and right. they lost that game by one point. Um, right. Okay. Right. So I, they fought. They fought their ass off in a back to back without their star. I, I mean, give them credit. So. Here is the thing that I initially I was concerned by, and I did have a talk with Minnesota Mike this morning because I didn't want to go in with uh, just with with I guess theories or thoughts that were unfounded. But as I'd watched in the Cleveland game in the first half, the second night of back to back, 
after, and we'll get to the end of Indiana in just a second. But is there a chance that Anthony Edwards, even at the age of 22, that they're going to wear him down and they they wear this team down? Because like you said, there are some injuries, but like Nas Reed, I don't think is going to give you what he's given you every single night. And I don't know about Nah, but what I'm concerned about is Anthony Edwards maybe taking the brunt of it on his shoulders. And I, I like it. Be a Kirby Puckett. Jump on my back and and let's and follow me to the promised land. But is there a chance that this will now wear him down by the time that the playoffs come? Because he rolls an ankle every game. It, 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 it's like, what do you got? You got uh, taxes. I know when I go to my job that a kid's going to call me a motherfucker and Anthony Edwards is going to roll his ankle. There it is. Yeah, yeah, there's absolutely a chance it, it happens. I think he's in, fully embracing the the – jump of my back, you know, let's go, um, which has been so fun to watch, especially the other night. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, he gets hurt legitimately every game and comes back every time, every time. Like he, he will go to the locker room and immediately come back two minutes later. And you're like, how is this kid? Like he is made of steel. Um, but you have to wonder like, what is his, what does his body feel like right now? And like, what is right. he like? He, he's gotta be hurt. Um, and eventually someone's going to have to take that, that, that load off of them. I think Nas has been doing that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, J Mac had 10 the other night, which was nice. J-Mac to putting in some good minutes as well, man. Yeah. And if Luke so, can play defense, I like, I like his offensive game, man. I do. He's been getting minutes. So, you know, I, I hate to, you know, we can talk about, um, Indiana, but, Tonight, as the day of this recording, they played the Denver Nuggets yep. on yep. the home uh, the second night of a back to back. Um, Rudy Gobert is questionable. Anthony Edwards is Anthony Edwards will play, um, yep. and then Nas, uh, Nas, is, Nas Reed is questionable because he got banged so, on the melon right last night. And so, if, if you're gonna throw Luka at Jokic, I mean that yeah. you're gonna lose. Well, like it, that was my point to uh, to my good friend. I said. It's, it's going to get bad, and this was the night that we played the Pacers, um, you know, on the first of a, a six-game road trip because I thought we would lose to Cleveland. I thought we would lose to the Lakers, and I thought we'd lose to the Clippers, and maybe one of two in Utah. Now, that didn't happen, but I do think as far as looking ahead to the playoffs with this team, and let's say Nas and Rudy are completely healthy, I still think that this would be a very good insight as to what the playoffs are going to look like, even if it ain't the Denver Nuggets. If it's the Dallas Mavericks, I think it's the same thing. Um, and, and so we have some, some games on the horizon that are going to, I think, give us a clue because you ain't playing the Utah Jazz, all right, in a tribute to Mike Conley, uh, like I say, on back-to-back -back games. Um I didn't understand what happened in L.A. Uh, I, I knew the Lakers were going to beat us. But the Clippers, I, I was ready at halftime to go, yep, see you later. Uh, and, and I have, like I say, I have no idea how that game turned around. I know Kawhi went, da went down, and that's when the worm turned. But it doesn't matter. But we don't have downs. 40-point turnover. Like, it, we were literally down 20. We won by 20. I mean, yep. good yep. God. Like, that was – impressive yep um but i do think that tonight is going to be extremely tough um i think Nas will be out there i think rudy i i thought that they sat rudy for two games like they didn't even give him the tribute because everyone hates rudy so maybe even in utah which i think he morally standing i think he was still he wasn't a bad guy in utah i think they kind of still liked him right they wouldn't even give him a tribute does that tell me that he's really hurt or do they say, no, we need you for Denver. So we're just going to make sure we can get enough. We can get by with what we got. And, and you just rest up big fella uh, uh, for Denver. Well, they didn't. So they didn't give Rudy a, a tribute because he had already been, he's been back to oh, Utah. That's right. That's right. Yep. Yeah, I'm sorry. So Mike Conley's first game back. He got a tribute, but um, no, I, I fully figured that he would rest in, in Utah um, just because it's like, you know, it's, it's Utah. It's, it's, an, it's an okay team. It's not a bad team. It's an okay team, but you don't need Rudy to win that game. And obviously we didn't. 
because um, I'd much rather have him to face off against Jokic. Oh yeah, uh, oh yeah. Um, Nas, I don't, I don't know what the head thing is. I, I think he just got he hit. Got on, the, on the, on the, on, I remember him like rubbing it, right? And then he left, and okay. that was it. Yeah, um, Anthony Edwards, he's questionable. He's going to play, like no question. Yep. He's, he's yep. going to. Um, so you know, it, it's your full strength, but you're not full strength. I guess. I mean, obviously without Cat, but. Um, yeah, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. And, uh, this will be a true test. Um, I, I, I'm not really going to look too much into it. I think if this team does take an L today, just because it's a, it's interesting circumstance. Um, right. but what do you think the atmosphere is going to be like at the target center tonight? Well, what is it? A Tuesday night. So, I mean, not a Friday no. night, but it's, uh, you, you got two of the best teams in the West, right? I mean, you, it's gotta be crazy. Right, and we've been on the road for six straight games, so you are hoping, and, and you know, like Ticket used to say, he was like, I love the Target Center when everyone's crazy and the, and the fans are all drunk and they're all yelling, and, and I hope that that's what, because I would love, man, I would love to have a statement-type game tonight, even because we, we have to face them, I think, three more times, right? Two more times, at least. Sure. Right, okay, so... Um, oh, and by the way, just because we are a fair and unapologetic, unapologetic podcast, um, I, I gotta gotta disagree with you on one point that you made about uh, Mr. Edwards running right out of the locker room again. Because I think you saw at halftime of the Clippers game, he didn't make it by by the start of the third quarter. You see that again? Now, what we're gonna talk about in a few minutes. Does he get a pass for shit like that? Because now that's twice. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay. I'm. What I'm gonna. Do you think, what do you think? Like, well, it's gonna be tough because I still stand by what I what I believe about teaching guys the right way and what is best for your team, what is best for your image, what is best for basketball. However. I was thinking about this. Uh, well, it just happened that night. The night, the, the last time that we did a podcast was when the Wolves were in Indiana. And I have maybe three Minnesota Timberwolves all time. I will never forget where I was when this happened kind of deal. Okay. And that's really kind of sad since we've been around since 89. But number three, and I thought about this and I'm like, eh. You got to give it to him. What did that night? I think Love had 40 points and 30 rebounds in a game. That, yep. that was pretty cool. And I think it was, maybe it was an overtime game. And it was, it was a night I was like, all right, we got nothing else. We had Al Jefferson for crying out loud. Um, that was my number three. Number two, Kevin Garnett hit a shot in game seven against the Sacramento Kings in the Western Conference Finals. Um, it was a big shot. But it wasn't like a, a buzzer beat or anything like that. It was just a clutch shot. We needed it. I'll never forget it because I was standing so close from him when he did it. Okay. Number one, and this is be, probably before your time. I don't even know if you're aware of it. We had this absolute stud on our team named Malik Seeley. And he hit a shot against the Indiana Pacers at Target Center from the corner to win the game. And I will never forget it. And unfortunately, uh, he passed away, got hit by a drunk driver um, not that long after that. And that Malik Seely shot, that was when Garnett stood up on the scorer's table. Our friend Marty was right there. Oh, oh, it was something that I will never forget. And it was always my number one Minnesota Timberwolves memory until the game against the Pacers again. And I have never seen... I, I mean, I'm telling you, Anthony Edwards hits clutch shot after clutch shot after clutch shot and then hustles it because I thought that they played it exactly the way that they were supposed to, okay, the Pacers. I mean, they get it down. He misses his free throw. Oh, he's not done yet. He books all the way back, and that, that block was 
one of the most phenomenal things I had ever seen in my life watching not only Timberwolves basketball, basketball period. And, and like I was, I was bitching about all oh, the, the, uh, the NBA dunk contest or NBA is blah, 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 and it'll never get better. That gave me hope because I had never seen a play like that where a motherfucker hitting his head on the rim and said, I've never jumped that high in my life and almost knocked himself out. And it was to end the game. It was one of the coolest Timberwolves moments of all time, period. He's such a winner. He's such a winner and just wants to win and just plays like that. I mean, I like I, I wasn't able to watch that game, unfortunately, oh. live, but I know, I know. And I, but I saw the replay and I mean, audibly, I'm just like, holy shit. When I saw it, like, have you seen I've the full seen speed like video? What's the, that? The full, have you seen the full speed video? Yeah. Like it, when he I, goes, I'm surprised. From- yeah, yes. like I don't know how he did that. I don't know. He, his his whole neck is above the the backboard. I, I, and I thought I thought when I looked at it again, I'm like, oh, he knocked himself out. But maybe his head is just as muscular as the rest of his body. You know what I mean? Like I I had never seen. And like I say, when I don't know if you saw the post game interview but he was so excited and he said, man, I'm beat up because he rolled his ankles like five times that night. And I'm going to give credit to Minnesota Mike's wife because she said, what's he got like body parts in the back room? Like where he just (laughs) goes back and just adjusts them and puts them on. And uh, I, I'm telling you that, that got me so excited for Timberwolves basketball that that's our guy. And so I went, okay, that's my number one. And it still is my number one, but guess what? I believe Kevin Love gets moved, bumped to the fifth. And I might even say, I love ticket, man. I love you so much, but I might have to, at least they're tied because a few games later, Anthony Edwards has the best dunk in the history of Minnesota Timberwolves basketball. It was that I don't watch Fox News or CNN, but yes, I was perusing just now and I, I landed on Fox. I'm sorry. I know I'm hate me. And they were playing that dunk on Fox fucking news, man. It was that his, good. His dunk. What? Like if you just had Twitter up and you just kept scrolling and scroll. I mean, I follow a lot of sports pages, but Every one of the, it was just the dunk, the dunk, the dunk, the dunk. Like the whole timeline was just the dunk. And it was every, it was like, okay, dunk of the year, dunk of the decade. Oh, yeah. dunk of, I've I mean, already heard dunk of the year for sure, but I'd say dunk of the 2000s at least, right? He basically gave John Collins a concussion from, <laughs> from his dunk. He just nutted and, him right in the head. Like, it's it's just, that's our guy. That's our guy. <laughs> And, it's so and I love it because even, even my boss was talking about this at work. Today. Like, I'm sorry. I, when I got work, I brought every adult that I saw and kid that I work with. I'm like, y'all see that uh, dunk last night, Anthony Edwards, man. Like, and I'm going to give credit to my boss right now. She says, what, what was John Collins thinking? Why would, why would you just get out of the way? Because you're going to be posterized forever. Everyone's going to remember John Collins' name, not for basketball, for ba- actually, hey, my ball's your chin. Okay, and th- there was. You know, like, it. He, he, it he's been in the league a couple couple years, but that was his Kodak moment uh, of just getting <laughs> smashed. Did you ever have posters up in your room, like, like posters of, like, random, not just Minnesota guys. Like, I used to have this poster, uh, the uh, – Oh, what was it? It was, it was, it was great. It was uh masters of dunk or man. And it had just these like captioned like photos of like nine different guys. Um, and, and all like their best dunks or whatever you'd have like pictures of Jordan, you know, flying high. Did you ever have any of those? Because I don't even know if they make them anymore, but I'll put one in my room at 50 years old for sure of that shot. And just him, just honestly, one of the best dunks I've seen. That that shot needs to be everywhere in Target Center. I mean, that needs to be hung. Just it, yep. it is it is now a a a 
icon of, of NBA basketball, just of Anthony, just, just, I, I can't even explain it. Like it was so, I watched it maybe a thousand times. Like it is crazy. Yep. And, and the, the and, full speed video is crazy too. And, and right. And you, I don't even think it, cause I've watched it just a few times myself and I don't even think that you, you still can appreciate or, uh, understand really no matter how many times you watch it i don't think you can fully appreciate or understand what an incredible dunk that was right i mean yeah it's superhuman yeah, it, 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 right and it's like it's hard it, it's it's just hard to to say like i mean he wants to be mj and we can always like man that was an mj move right that, that was like a, a an I, iconic dunk that is you know Top three, I agree. NBA history, yeah, I, I agree with that because you know when I give credit uh, to some of my friends and say he's got the potential of not only being the best to ever wear Minnesota Timberwolves uniform, or he has the potential to be top ten all time player in the NBA. Absolutely, but they're gonna be talking about that dunk for the next twenty to thirty years for sure. Don't you think? It, they absolutely should be. There's that's our guy, that's our guy, Minnesota. All right. Um, last thing, and then I'll get off the get off the friends thing, you know. But but I I will say I I'm just you know some of y'all disappoint me, and uh, and I had to go back to another group of friends to you know because I had to share that about the the Carl Anthony Towns thing. It still sticks in my craw, and and I'm gonna challenge folks. That you know, maybe Minnesota sports ain't right for you. I mean, maybe you need to go to a podcast, you know, where there's a fairly attractive girl that was, you know, on Jeopardy and has a cat named Nas Reed, and you want to talk about the colors of the uniform and who looks better in short shorts versus baggy shorts, then that's fine. That's your prerogative. Go ahead and do that. But come on, man. We, we gotta we gotta educate ourselves. All right, we're gonna move on. Uh NCAA basketball tournament around the corner. Uh, do you have any design? I know there's there's games in Omaha, which is not far, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I won't be able to go to any of them, unfortunately, but they're they're coming up here. Do you get excited about the NCAA basketball tournament? Any any or, or did you ever at at a time? I, I did, and then. Uh, I mean, growing up, you know, doing tons and tons of tournament challenges and everything, and it was really big a couple of years ago for me. Um, last couple of years, no, just I, I don't know, maybe just uh, yeah, being busy, whatnot. But um, this year, I'm, I'm kind of kind of excited. I what are you excited I'm, about? I think it's just the maybe the the feeling of building that bracket is coming back, and just like. Cause it's, you know, truthfully, I, it's not like I've seen every team play basketball and just, you know, I've never, I, I don't know. It's just fun to pick upsets. And, and last year, yeah. had a couple brackets this year, I've only made one bracket so far. I've only made but, one um, as well. I'm kind of excited. Who's, who's your, who's your pick? Well, okay. So, and I would like to point out because I did, uh, I did, uh, watch the, one well, no, I watched uh, later on, but I, I watched the Gophers play in the Big Ten tournament, and uh, which was not cool. Uh, but I do remember saying, "Okay, well, Michigan State goes on; they got to play per don't," and you knew Purdue was going to lose. And so, spoiler alert for anybody's filling out their bracket, maybe before if you watched this before Thursday. Don't pick Purdue in anything, man. They're going to be out. They maybe win one game if they're lucky, and they will be out, I guarantee. And I think that, what's his name, Edie, Eddie, Erdy, Ubi, way overrated, way overrated. Don't you think? Now, yeah, I agree. Um, I will say they are in my Elite Eight in this one. Okay. Um, but I'm curious what your uh, – I'll give you my my final four here and my pick. Um I've got UConn and I yeah. got Alabama. Yeah. And I got Houston. Yeah. And I got Creighton. 
Okay, that's interesting. I, I have UConn taking on Creighton. Okay, that's I interesting. Have, uh, I have Creighton winning the whole thing. Wow, that's a bold. I'm a statement. believer. That's a bold statement. Um, I'm going to go with my sleepers right off the bat, and this is not because. Um, I hate our, our friends to the East, um, but I my one sleeper is, I guarantee, James Madison, the Dukes are going to gonna beat Wisconsin. And, you know, you always you always can roll on 12 and 5 seeds because that's usually who does get beat. Um, and, but there's something about James Madison, 31 and 3, I really believe. And Wisconsin played actually really well in the Big Ten tournament, but I got to believe James Madison – uh, is is going to beat Wisconsin. And then my other sleeper, and I want you to follow this because I, I really believe this as well, at 30-3, and three, the McNeese State Cowboys out of Louisiana, they have Gonzaga in the first round, and I think they probably get Kansas in the second round. I have McNeese State going to the Final Four as the biggest sleeper of all that. I know. And you know what? I got no money down on it, so I can do that. Um, I've got so UConn. Okay, go ahead. No, no. You, you, what's your final four? So I, I don't have it in front of me um, right now. However, I do have uh, – I don't have what I need. Um, so, okay. So I've got UConn coming out of uh, – I don't have the, the air areas that they are going. I have UConn coming out of one area. Uh I have Baylor facing UConn in the uh, in the Final Four, and then what is very surprising is uh, I have Marquette facing McNeese State, and I have UConn facing Marquette in the final, and I have UConn winning. And I never go with number one seeds. I don't. I just. I, there's something about UConn this year that that I, I I feel I have a very strong feeling that they are going um, to run the table. I don't know why because I haven't watched a lot of UConn games this year. And yeah, the McNeese State that is way out of left field. But hey, you think it's funny, but you never know because the NCAA has come completely different these days. Um, I, and and I, so, go ahead. I was say I, I have McNeese uh, winning their first game, but losing to Kansas. Um, Baylor's interesting because Baylor, I never, I've learned my lesson with Baylor. They <laughs> always screw me in this this thing every right. every freaking time. Um, they were a final four in Minneapolis, right? Wasn't Baylor really? a final four? I I could be wrong on that. I thought um, they were. My uh, my sweet, they, I got them going to the Sweet Sixteen, but they are a fourteen seed, uh, Morehead State. Oh yeah, they are a quick team. Quick teams do well in these tournaments, right? So right, uh, will they have enough to continue that for four or five games though? I don't know because I mean I have Iowa State beating them um, in the Sweet Sixteen, but I mean they got uh, who do I have? here i haven't beaten illinois i'm not sold on no. illinois personally i'm not and then I have, except for, you know what illinois is a scary team though i would not want to play them because as their coach said when they play when they're when when all their rods and gones are you know in 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 alignment he says there's no team in the country that can beat them um we'll see because the big 10 usually bows out right away like usually it's like first round there's only one Big Ten team left in the tournament. Now I do have Nebraska actually going far. I have them going to the Sweet Sixteen or uh, uh, the Sweet Sixteen, and uh, I think that's about it. Though I had Illinois in the Sweet Sixteen as well, but I think I had Purdue out in the the second round. I had Kansas out in the second round because they do that sometimes. Arizona, I think, is going to lay a big shit burger. Uh, they always well, I'm do. I'm not talking about North Carolina either. You know, uh, I think I got NC State in the Sweet 16 in honor of TJ Warren. Okay. Right. Um, I will say, if Baylor's going to lose, they 
Uh, I could see Colgate beating them. It just – the there are teams, uh, well, there maybe are teams that, that when you're going through your bracket, you're like, I have never heard of this team. But there yeah. are teams, games that just sound like an upset. They just sound yeah. like an upset. You know what okay. I mean? So, so you you didn't do because I hear I was like oh no one's done his job he knows about Morehead State they're a fast team and now Colgate uh, you know the uh, number one cavity protector and and I was like what well, you you've done your your uh, your your homework but you're just going on name because you know I got a buddy whose mom would just pick them on red or blue states all oh, the blue states are every blue state team is gonna win you know and all the way to the final four well you know. So there's sometimes when I'm like, I don't know who I've never seen Colgate play. I don't know what they do, whatever. So now I pick Baylor to be, beat them, but I can yeah. just, you know, um, I know some people that'll pick them off of uh, mascots. I know, you know, yep. they'll do whatever, but I will say um, there is not since 1998, a team has not won um, the, the, the tournament uh, in the West. So there's not been a Western I mean, team, West. I think, from yeah, from like Missouri on out uh, out to the West. There have not been a team that, or I guess Kansas, because Kansas won, but um, since '98. So well, speaking of West, or uh, what do they call it, the beach, or whatever it is, you see that poor bastard at Dan Munson, the former Gopher coach. He's at Long Beach State, right? And, and then they beat. <laughs> Yeah, right. They they agreed. They they respect his his decision not to return. And then they go on this big run in the in the Big West tournament. And now they're in the tournament and their coach is going bye bye. I just thought that was that was pretty funny. And then uh isn't isn't Patino Jr. in, in the tournament this year again as well? Who is he again with uh um... Yeah, New Mexico or New Mexico State. I think it was. Uh, I want to say New Mexico State, but uh, yeah, then he's not. I don't think he's in. No, I don't think so. Okay, was it NIT that he in? Well, speaking of NIT, what are you doing? Uh, what are you doing later on? I believe the Gophers play in the NIT Classic uh, tonight. I, I believe at tonight at seven or eight o'clock. Now, I found it funny. I think I heard a story. Uh, Indiana and their coach Mike Woodson, they decline to be in the turn. Now the Final Four is uh, in Indianapolis, I believe, and I think Indiana declined because they would have had to host a game. I I think I heard this the right way. I if if not, man, I've had some crazy dreams. But I thought I heard that Mike Woodson and the University of Indiana declined to be in the NIT and to host a game because he said he didn't want to disrespect assembly hall by having to host a second tier tournament game. And they were horrible this year. They were so bad. That's interesting. I've never heard anyone turn down more basketball. Like exactly. I, that's kind of interesting, but to be honest, I couldn't care at all at all about the NIT. Right, right, right. And, you know, it used to be back in the day. You, now, did you know the NIT used to be the big one? That used to yeah, be the right. big, okay. But when I was growing up and I like maybe even just a little younger than you, if you won the NIT, that was a big deal. It was somewhat of a big deal, okay? And I remember watching the Gophers play Ralph Sampson back in the day in the early 80s, I believe, in the NIT. And that was a deal. And so you had guys like Townsend or the, I think the Gophers won the NIT like two years when I was in college and everyone went, this is just a springboard. They are on the verge of making a run at the final four for real. And you get all excited about winning the fucking NIT. And it didn't mean shit, nothing this year or by 2024. It absolutely doesn't mean anything, man. You're playing teams that are, well below 500 in this tournament. So, right. And that's why it just, I don't care. Right. I don't and care. they don't even, it used to be that they had the, the, the finals at Madison square garden, because that's what the NIT was all about. Now I, I believe it's, uh, 
Oh, where where Butler plays their their home games. That's where it's it's in Indianapolis, so it's not even really the same thing. But there you go. Yeah. That I didn't. I for, I completely forgot about. Thank you, because I want to bring just one thing. I, I I promise, folks. Well, friends, I'll make it short. But I hear today that Blake Snell signs with the Giants for two years, sixty-one million motherfucking dollars. Now, why I'm making this a big deal is because what's his name? Uh, like the big show to be named later predicted. Uh, what's his name? Cern Scott Fees. Boris. What? Scott Boris. No, no, no. The, not his agent. I'm talking about a Twins pitcher on the roster that we traded for uh, that I said wasn't even going to make the ex-giant. Wasn't even going to make oh, the team. De Cern Yeah. Out for the year, just like I said. He's now, not out for the year. Huh? He's not out What's for that? the year. That's what I heard today. He's out for the year. No, he's gonna, okay. He's going to be on the DL to, to start the year. Okay, I, I thought I had heard that he's out for the year. Either way, I don't think he's going to be. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Here's my beef right now with the Minnesota Twins and the poll ad. Mafia. Blake Snell makes your team better automatically. He asked for two years, 61 mil. You're telling me that you couldn't do the prices right, 61 mil and a dollar to get this guy for two years. You're not talking about, I wanted 10 years. I just won the Cy Young. I wanted 10 years, 350 mil. You're telling me you couldn't afford 30 fucking million dollars a year to for a number two starter that's automatically makes you better because we don't have a fifth starter right now. What is going what is going on? They they have a chance to redeem themselves because a World Series stick champ is still out there in Jordan Montgomery. So throw them the money because good God, we need it. I heard that they're not even going to make a play for Montgomery. But my point is this guy was totally affordable. And we had talked about, okay, you can't just keep throwing Carlos Correa money around. You can't just keep doing that. This guy was absolutely in, in the window where we could have signed him for two years and you wouldn't. And I don't like piggybacking on other people's shows, but I'm listening to Dan Barrero today. And some guy texted in and he said, the most expensive decision you ever make is missed opportunities. And I went, oh, oh my God, that's so profound. That is so incredible. I can't believe you miss nothing by paying that guy 30 mil for the next two years to make your team better. You aren't in for the long haul. You don't strip. You're not in a wild position. Zach Parisi, Ryan Suter. This was completely a doable thing. And I didn't even go a little bit more on it. Fucking offer him 65 mil for two years and make this team better. I mean, hey, has the whole world gone crazy? I don't know. I don't, I have no idea what's going on because there's still, I mean, Michael Taylor hit 20 homers the other year and he signs with a minor league deal for like $3 million with the pirates. You've got Jordan Montgomery who won a world series and just killed in it. And he's still out there. Um, I, I have no idea what's happening. Owners are getting stingy. I understand the economy sucks, but good God, spend some fucking money. What, what, what were we, I mean, I want to know if we were even in the running because if, if I were Blake Snell, really, because if I were Blake Snell, I would have somebody like a Carlos Correa saying, man, you got to check out how cool the fans are here. What a good situation we've got. We've got a lot of young players who are going to back up you on the mound because they're going to hit it out of the fucking park. You need to, I just don't understand why we weren't, we weren't even talking about this. And my question is, because I don't think it's got anything to do with the poll ads, because like I say, I don't, I, are they so committed to not spending money and making sure that we just remain in this little ball as far as how much we're going to spend because we're so happy with what we did last year and accomplished. Nothing. We didn't win a World Series. We won a playoff series. That's it. But are we 
so afraid of actually going, all right, I can be a big fish in a little pond or I can be a big fish in a big pond where there's other big fish swimming around. To me, my parents always taught me, if you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly. But I think it's a, the poll ads are committed. They're committed to not spending money, which especially if I'm Carlos Correa, who just signed a big deal to, to be here and be here long term. And my owner comes out and says, you know what? We're not going to spend any more money. I, I'm pissed. Like, I, like, come on. Like, it's right here. It's yep. right there for the taking. There is a guy. There are guys out there that will make you World Series favorites. Favorites. Right. I mean, even bring you a World Series. And we're just sitting on our ass. You have billions of dollars. Spend it. Right. Spend it. Thank you. That is that is all I wanted to go with because um, I just I, I I don't get it because like I say if if you want a I, I if you're a businessman you're gonna get fans every night at the ballpark as long as you're relevant that's just the way we are I'm sorry Mr. Polad that is that's the way Minnesota fans are they're very fickle but the Twins fan base is a little bit different than 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 most. And but they will stay away if you are a basement dweller. And all you had to do was spend a little bit of money. And I'm telling you, if, if, if they would have signed Blake Snell, they immediately become a World Series contender, in my opinion. But I could be wrong on that as well. So there you go. No, I they they immediately do. Immediately. Okay. All right. You got anything else? Because I know we went now a little bit longer, but I had to get that Blake Snell shit out because it, it just, it, you know, you made the point, you're like, they're committed, the Polans are committed not to spending money. Well, that's really not fair. Now, is it? it? It isn't for me as a Twins fan, but jack up those prices to, to make me go watch that team. I, all right, all right, I'm, I'm done. Had a bad day at work today, but I didn't bring that negativity in, I don't think, to my Minnesota sports. I thought I was pretty upbeat today. For our good friend down in KC, uh, Noah Storzinger, I am Johnny Voss. Thank you for watching the podcast. The show to be named later. We will see you next time. Go Wolves. <laughs>